Hey, good morning guys. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over um, something on Able. So on our last trip and our most recent trip, the CTIS system started acting up. Um, and I'll kind of explain to you what is happening and how we're going to fix it. Uh, and I'm guessing on this fix. So, uh, as some of you may know or may not know, uh, I am the admin for this page right here on Facebook. So it's the LMTV Facebook page. And re recently this morning I uploaded a file. It's a troubleshooting uh, CTIS troubleshooting manual for the Spicer CTIS that's on LMTV trucks. So if you're not part of this page, um, you can send a request and make sure you answer all three questions and agree to the terms and we can let you in. If not, there's a 15 minute window and it automatically times you out and you'll never be able to request it again. So just be careful when you get on there. It's an ITARS restricted uh, group, meaning that some of the stuff that's on there is restricted uh, that has to do with military vehicles and whatnot. So. Anyhow, enough on that. Let's go to this CTIS troubleshooting guide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the um, the warning signals. And we're going to go over what I'm seeing when we're driving the truck and what's going on. So, um, normally you have a single terrain light lit that's flashing to achieve new pressures or it's solid which the pressure is achieved. That would be a normal system. Um, what we're experiencing right now is the run flat flashing with a terrain light. So basically um, what the system thinks is happening, my phone is having a heck of a time trying to focus on this. Let's try. There, that's a bit better. So basically what the truck or the, the ECU for the CTIS is thinking is that you have a bullet hole in your tire or one of your tires has gone flat and it is gonna try to get you to safety. Um, so uh, basically what's going on is something is leaking in the system that's creating this havoc with the CTIS ECU. Now, my guess is that since my wheel valves are so old and the quick release valve stays open, that one of the wheel valves is staying open when it should close. And so it's deflating the tire. And of course that air goes through the quick release valve and that's how the tires deflate. So based on that theory, we are going to go out to the garage here and I'm going to show you some components I acquired a long time ago. Don't ask me where to get them now. They probably cost a fortune, but at the time uh, it was a good deal. So I bought them and I'm glad I did. But anyhow, let's go out to the garage and we'll go through what I'm going to do. Okay, so here is a part number for you guys. I don't know how much it's going to help you. Like I said, I bought these a long time ago. And uh, they're pretty much non-existent now unless you want to pay an extraneous price for them. Anyhow, I got four of them. This is basically what it is. It's a brand new wheel valve for the CTIS system. And it's got a little filter in there for those of you who are superstitious or believe all the myths and rumors on social media about counteract balance beads ruining your CTIS system. It's not going to happen impossible your chances of uh, getting struck by lightning five times in a row in 10 seconds are greater anyhow we got that I also have these I'll give you this part number but once again um, these were actually reasonably priced at one time they were seven dollars a piece and I just checked and if you can find them they are now about fifty to eighty dollars each so basically all it is is a right angle valve. I have seven of these. I am not going to replace these yet, I don't think. Um, 
this is kind of a test to see if this is going to fix the problem. I'm pretty certain it is, um, but if not, we'll have to order some other parts that I don't have. And the prices on those are pretty extraneous. There's like a uh, quick release valve on the front and rear, but we're not going to deal with that yet. We're going to start with the small parts and work our way up with stuff that I have on hand. So let's go in the truck and I'll kind of show you what's going on if I can replicate it. On a side note, you can see that the tires are not flat. They are completely inflated. And we drove back with the CTIS controller disconnected. Um, this one looks low, but there's an angle on the driveway that makes it look like that. So yeah, let's go in the cab here and I will show you what's I going on. I just turned on. the truck on after sitting for a week and I did not drain the air tanks and you can see everything holds pressure the way it's supposed to. that everything is peachy keen and there's no problems with the CTIS. Let's try reinflating here to highway pressure. the quick release valve staying open while it was trying to inflate the tires but it's not doing that now so perhaps <laughs> the uh, wheel valves on the tires have corrected themselves I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack those in the truck with us so that if it happens again I can fix it on the trail 
shut the truck down. You guys hear that? That's the quick release valve letting air out of the tires. And it shouldn't be doing that. So you can tell that uh, when I turned the truck on there, it closed that valve, which means one of the tire or the wheel valves is bad. So if we want to figure out what a tire it is that has the bad valve, we're just going to let it deflate on its own and we'll figure it out real quick here. But I think I'm going to replace all four of them. Alright guys, as you can see I went through and replaced all of the valves. I don't have new hoses and those things are so rare. You know there was a company that popped up on the Facebook page that says they were going to make a bunch of them for us and then they disappeared. I don't, I don't know, maybe there's a rare fitting in there or something that nobody wants to deal with, but um, yeah. So now we're going to uh, test the system. And if it has the exact same behavior as it does before, the only other two things that could be replaced on the CTIS system, because it's such a simple system, um, are the quick release valves front and rear. Um, this will sometimes give you problems if it's not adjusted correctly or you haven't taken it apart and cleaned it out. These are readily available. You can find these at truck stops. Um, it's just a, a brake pressure protection valve um, but yeah the newer ones are not adjustable so you can't adjust them to a certain PSI uh, there's one other component that's part of the CTIS system and it is a sensor that's on where is it there's a sensor that goes on one of the, there it is right there. So that sensor right there uh, will provide air pressure to the uh, PCU, I think is what it's called, the pressure control unit for the CTIS, which is under the passenger kick panel. So those are the only other components I could think of. This is fairly new, um, and I know what it's like when that fails, and this is not the same thing, so. Anyhow, let's do a little time lapse of the uh, truck reinstalling the front tire. I think that fixed it. The truck has done its checks about six times now and it keeps going back to the normal highway pressure, not the run flat. And um, I don't hear that quick release valve uh, fighting with the wheel valve anymore. So yeah, if I hit it, it'll do a couple pressure checks, then it'll go right back to it. So it's not having the same hiccup it did before. Yeah. I think that fixed it. That took about 25 minutes at 1100 RPM to fill these giant 14R20 tires to 85 PSI. 
so uh, yeah it takes a while um, one of the things you're gonna notice if you start your truck and all the tires are flat you're gonna have a run flat flashing and your highway pressure or whatever pressure you select flashing with it that's totally normal it will not go out of the run flat mode until you tap highway so I let them inflate almost all the way and then I hit highway and then it tops them off after that so it seems to be doing what it's supposed to be doing now it'll pressure check close the valve and then release so that's how it's supposed to work well guys we got the CTIS armor all back on the uh, CTIS system is performing the way it's supposed to I let the truck uh, run for another 15 minutes or so and I uh, kept trying to make it fail and uh, it's just not doing it so it had to be one of those wheel valves if I were to guess I would say it was the driver's side one uh, that was doing it but um, a couple other things uh, when I took the hoses apart and the valves apart and everything I didn't notice any oil any debris and of course no there were no counteract balance beads inside the CTIS assembly on the wheel valve. Um, I don't know who keeps spreading the rumor around where that's gonna make your CTIS fail, but it's just, it's not gonna happen. The, if you look at the way the wheel is assembled, you have a bead lock and then you have the rim. So you have the rim, the bead lock, and then the tire. So for the CTIS, or for the counteract balance beads to get to that little tiny eighth inch hole valve, uh, they would have to go through solid metal, which is the uh, the bead lock that's on there. And if you go around the bead lock, yes, there is a small, tiny little gap. But anytime the truck's moving, those beads are under centrifugal force. Um, even moving, you know, five miles per hour, they're under centrifugal force. And for one of those to bounce through there and then magically make its way into a one eighth valve stem that's in the center of the, the rim, it's not gonna happen and even if it does like I showed you at the beginning of the video there is a filter that goes on the wheel valve that catches everything any little pieces of debris or plastic or whatever is in the, the wheel that gets pushed into that area but like I said your chances are better of uh, getting hit with lightning five times in ten seconds than uh, the counteract balance beads making a CTIS system fail so uh, <laughs> yeah uh, Social media these days, I don't know why so many people want others to fail, but that's just how it is. It's like the cool factor, I guess. But anyhow, um, that's probably going to be it for this episode. Uh, we might have something coming up that has to do with these. Because I'm tired of adjusting and folding and, oh, it's just a mess. Um, I may have a solution coming up for that. Uh, those are coming from another LMTV guy on the East Coast. He had a spare set, sent me a message, and uh, I had to hem and haw over it, but I shouldn't have. And so I just got them from him, and those will be here in a little bit. Uh, but other than that, uh, I hope you guys are staying safe, taking care of each other. And as always, I will catch you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.